Now we've finished the record player case, now we can spend some time on the actual turntable itself. Now this BSR UA15 uh, deck from the late 60s, um, when we tested this it didn't even rotate so there's something uh, quite wrong. The back is quite simple really um, and I just generally just need to strip down and clean, clean off old sticky grease that's seized up. Um, Re-lube it, put it back together and, and see what it's doing. So I can just test it on the bench. I'm just going to bear off the wires that came from the motor. Now we've got this four wires come off. Um, the black and the brown is actually the 230 volts or 240 volts uh, mains. The red and white, this is actually the low voltage output to the transistor amplifier. So we'll leave those disconnected for now. So I'm just going to bear off the ends. And then I'm going to connect them to the safe block. So hopefully now we can uh, see what's going on. If I turn that on, well, I can hear the motor running. There's no no turning going on at all. So I'm going to fetch the platter off now and see why it's not turning. This has actually got more problems as well. I can't actually move this arm to get it out of the way, so I can't take the the actual turntable off. Uh, also I noticed the tone arm is, is sort of locked in position which sort of indicates that the auto changer mechanism is sort of mid cycle uh, when the motor's sort of lost drive so I need to find a way of getting this to sort of creep round and um, get into the right gearing position fortunately I think I can just turn this and as I drive this it might find its position ah so now I saw the arm has just dropped I heard a click. Still stuck. Aha! There we go, we found it. Easy fix. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver and flick this circlip out of the way. Hope it doesn't fly off too far down the workshop. That's off. This should just lift off now. But it's a bit stuck. All those years of grease and debris on it. When it's a bit stubborn like this I find a bit of hot air can be used to heat up the the grease. And just all these parts, just warm it up a bit, just gently with a bit of hot air. You don't want to melt the plastic, that's the uh, that's another aspect to this. Straight away we can see part of the problem with this. It is all down to old grease. This is the motor spindle here. This rotates and this drive wheel should be resting against... In fact I'll put this on a setting. So this that should have moved now and been pushed into the wheel like this. So there's a spring here that should push this this way. And that's the problem, it's just seized up. So this is the area that primarily needs the um, repair. If I just put some power onto the motor now, we can see it should drive. So that's rotating now. And that should be pushed against there. And that gives us the drive. So now we know what the initial problem is. We can take that mechanism apart. Let's take the drive wheel off. This is actually in very good condition. It's nice and round and it's still quite soft. Nice. So I mentioned taking this part off.
clean this roller up enough you find it will turn freely and if it's turning freely that's pretty much that saved you quite a job. I've had these seize up before but I've had to use um, heat on it like a hot air gun to melt the old grease off and then try and get some oil into it hoping that the oil will melt into the into the grease and sort of reform it into a actual lubricant. This one appears to be quite free, which is good news. I'll just give this a bit of a squirt with the alcohol there. Just leave that to sort of soak in a bit, sort of work its way through the mechanism. This is the thrust bearing assembly. You've got two flat sort of washers. Uh, there's a rubber washer there as well. Uh, and this actual thrust bearing, which is five ground balls in a little cage. As you can see, it's full of old congealed grease. So the first thing to attempt to do with this is to actually see if we can lift out some of that thick sludgy grease. and just wipe that off. Isopropyl alcohol seems to be the best thing for cleaning this old grease up with. Just hold it down with a screwdriver let's give it a clean with a stiff brush. Flip that over, clean the other side making it all together far more pleasant to handle. This is the cam for the auto changer. We'll do the same to this, just clean all the old grease off. I've just greased my own hand. Incidentally I notice that the outer gear of this it's not very little lubrication on it at all. There's almost just a little remnant of grease there. But that's about it. It's not under high load this mechanism so it's probably not too critical but it's always good to put a little bit of lubrication on it. We'll fit this part back on here. There we go. So clip on. Just give it a little nip. Perfect. We're now looking at the underside of the mechanism for the speed control, which is this little lever here, or this knob here. This moves this around and it that little rubber wheel is under there and this mechanism here lifts the wheel to different heights. So on that stepped spindle it engages a different sort of pulley ratio. That bit as you can see works okay. What isn't working okay is the way that this is pushed back into it which is this spring on here so we can give that a clean up. We do that first of all take this part off just flick that off with the pliers then there's a little washer and a plastic plug and then the spring tension unwinds now so it wants to release that's just hooked over that mechanism there Let's take this motor out just to get it out of our way. You can use a pliers or a screwdriver to move the circlips off. Don't forget the washers. 
see if that's giving us, so the mouse comes out, see if that's giving us some more room. A little tip I gave myself is to actually mark where the springs were attached. So as I pull them out, just to give me a clue where they came from. Because there's quite a lot of holes on here, so it can be misleading. That's part of the problem. <laughs> Now all this mechanism can come apart for good old cleaning. It's the same theme again. Strip it down, clean the old grease off. Certainly more pleasant putting the nice clean parts back together. Just put the small assemblies back together just to uh, make this a little bit less fiddly. Now as we put these things back together all nice and clean we just need to put a bit of fresh lubricant on. So I'm going to be using a semi-fluid grease which stays rather <laughs> runny. <laughs> Which is what you sort of want. You don't want to put loads on though. It's pretty mucky stuff. So just around here is where the control arm will go. So we'll just place the control arm on, or whatever it's called. I'm calling it a control arm, <laughs> so just for clarity. We just want to put a little bit of grease just on the sliders there, on the sort of the ramps. Just a bit, not not loads, otherwise you make a right mess. Okay, the next part to go on is the this part here which climbs up the little steps. So we'll just put a little bit of grease on here and on there. Hook that into where it came from. Rest that on there. Then there's a little collar that sits around there, this part here, drop that on. And then we engage this mechanism that I just put together a bit earlier. So this part engages, um, goes over there like an underneath. So we just put a bit of grease around just in that hole there and just in there. Just feed that underneath there. I should remember to make it go the right way. This part has to go through there. Tuck it under. And it drops on like that. This pin, which is the one that was originally stuck, that has to go in from the underneath of this and slide up. Just going to put a little touch of grease on there, just on the, on the spindle itself. Now the awkward bit, trying to locate where the hole is. There we go. And out, pop it, out it pops. Okay. So far, so good. So this is all sort of put up together and nicely lubricated. Next part that goes on is the spring. So this arm, which is the wheel that drives on this, so we have to push the arm. The arm needs a spring force pushing it this way which is done with this part here so how this works is I'm going to put keep this pin pressed up so you engage the hook of the spring over there you push it down onto that spindle and then what you have to do is turn it a few times to preload it so you put a bit of tension on probably about three or four turns and one more there we go it's clicked into place we see here now this has now got the correct 
action there, spring loaded. I was going to hold on to that. We need to find the little spring clip that came off. Oh, with a cat hair on it. And just clip it under there. Now the motor is, um, I've seen it's working already, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a dust off really, just to get all the just bits of dust and muck off it. There's not much wrong with it, but what I will do is just lubricate the bearings. They don't seem to be too bad, but it's not very intrusive just to add just a little drop of oil with this little oiler. And at that one just give it a little, little spin. You don't want to put a lot of lube on that because if that gets everywhere it's uh, <laughs> because remember this is a frictional drive so you've got the rubber wheel actually runs against this. You don't want that to be all slippery. And same in the bottom there's another little bearing there. Just get in there with a little fine needle, just a little drop of oil there. I shall keep it going another 50 years I reckon. That's not good to go back in the chassis. Just turn it over and line the holes up. A washer there, one there and one there. These rubber mounts don't look in bad condition really. They may have got a bit shorter than they used to be but I think uh, within range we can still adjust them. So get the circlip on. Oh, I think it's an E-clip actually. I keep calling it a circlip but whatever these things are. And finally this one. Again, just a little drop of oil on the bush. Put it over the spindle. Now we've got the problem where the spring action's working properly. <laughs> so, the, so this part here wants to go all over the place. So that had a little fibre washer. As you can see now it's uh, not working quite as it should do. Oh I see the problem, the, the issue with this wheel flopping about, there's a, supposed to be a clip there, one of these seed washer things, that's supposed to engage in a groove just under there. It would have been ideal to fit that um, originally. <laughs> oh we pay the price for impatience. So I'll just f see if I can just jiggle that on with the pliers. And yes, this screw here is used to adjust the height so that it engages in the correct step on the spindle. But it looks to me, like oh, that's 70 hertz on the bottom one, that's near okay. Could do we going down a little bit. I think that's spot on. I'm now going to pull the rest of the these linkages and levers off the bottom just to give those a clean up. Um, I don't expect too much trouble around this end. There's, it's not normally too troublesome. These bits aren't too dirty at all actually. It 
This is another part that will need a good clean. Now we've got that exposed, we, this is the bottom of the auto change mechanism here. It seems to be quite free. They recommend in the service manual not to lubricate this. It's another part that should just run very dry and light. But this is a bottom of the tone arm mechanism here. Uh, it'd be a good idea whilst I'm down here just to give this a bit of a light cleaning. See some of this has got a bit of gunk in there. Just clean it up like all the other parts. It all feels nice and free anyway. It's all nice and clean now. Let's give it the lightest bit of lubrication. And back down in there where it came from. Yes, yeah, not forget this washer that came off here. Let's pop that back on. Like that. Let's not forget to put this little <laughs> thing in the washer back on. Slide that back underneath. Little pivot it is. There we go. This part's invariably minging old grease all over it. Let that soak for a little few seconds. We'll see what wipes off. Hopefully, most of it will just wipe off. Now. Just seeing some muck on this part here. Not a surprise, this grease is uh, it's probably 60 years old now. So this part, put the little fibre washer back on. Tiny bit of grease. Put the clip back in. We could see if I can get a bit of oil in this. Make sure it goes freely. So it's soaked down. And more grease before we put this on. So this lives on there in that position. So we've got to engage on that. So we need to just lubricate that. Right, okay. So remember the lubrication points. Just do grease around here. 
fresh new grease upon this ramp and around here. Put a bit on around this pivot. Start off re-engage the spring. This is all quite under a bit of spring tension this is. Get this on there. Pivot down there. Engage this onto the slot there. A little bit more light lube around here. Put the washer on and the screw there we are now we're on the home straight just the bearing and the cam so we'll put the rubber washer on the bottom there and put this bottom ring on there the tiniest bit of grease on there. Right, what I need to do with this bearing now is actually uh, put some grease in it. A bit of a mucky job really. I'm just going to brush some in. They don't need loads. There's probably be a specification for exactly how much it needs. I've not read that far. That's probably plenty there. I'm going to drop that on there. Just lightly lubricate this with just what's left on my fingers. And that's the bearing on there. Good. Last messy job now is to lubricate this. Easy to do with a brush. Just brush it around, just like they did in the factory. That's about it. Just get a little bit in the in the bore, so it'll push it just a little bit because it'll push through with the as we place it on the on this pin here. Jiggle it about till it sits properly. There we go. Secured with the Danese circlips. That's a little bit of grease on all the gear teeth there. Before I put it back together, I'm just going to do is make sure, now I've got grease everywhere I want grease, is just make sure that I haven't <laughs> got grease where I don't want it. So I'm just going to get a bit of alcohol on there and just make sure just everywhere it's free from grease, especially on the inside of the turntable. Because this is the friction surface here. Just make sure there's no, you know, no grease or anything on here. That should be fine. Place that over the spindle there. Might have to put your hand underneath. Oh, no. That seems to have engaged nicely. So I'm just going to pop the circlip back on there.
microphone for a power test. So that should be the motor on. What's nice is I can't hear it running. 16 RPM, let's go. 33, 45, and 78. My speech working going up the gearbox range, <laughs> up the range. See how he goes down. 45, 33, and 16. That's looking encouraging. I'm going to put some proper vinyl on this now to see how it sequences with a proper record on there using the auto changer. So I'm going to put this um, album, this LP, on there and just let it go with the auto changer. Fingers crossed. Find the start position. Go on. That looked very good. I can hear it so we know the cartridge is knackered already so well I'm gonna see see how it finds the end see if it cycles. I'll take it to the lead out of the album there. Wind again. That should stop. Happy days. Just gotta sort out the cartridge now. These old flip over cartridges are pretty much obsolete, especially these crystal ones. Um, you just can't get them. So this has got to go. And these plugs are a bit fiddly. There we go. This is also a mono cartridge, which of course they were back in the day. Stereo was quite fancy and expensive. Um, but this, this cartridge has suffered from um, the typical death. Um, it's got these um, it's like crystals in there, like a salt, Rochelle salts, I think it's called, and they've over time it's absorbed moisture, and it's just killed it. So there's just no output out of this. So I'm going to put a modern ceramic cartridge on, which gives similar output, so it'll do the job. Um, but it'll be a stereo cartridge. But this record player has only got a mono amplifier on it. So what I need to do is physically mount the new cartridge, and arrange the stereo outputs to give us um, a nice single mono. That's what we're going to try. These are the modern ceramic cartridges that you can buy. They're quite inexpensive um, and they do the job well. Um, but they are very much, you know, there's no um, 78 um, flip over style for them. You can still get those but they're quite expensive. So in this case for most general record playing these do fine. Um, they've got these plastic mounts so I'm going to have to work out how to mount that in the original head shell. So now I've got the head shell on the bench upside down. I can take the original bracket out. It uses these tiny little screws. So this is quite easily removed. So the next stage is working out how this thing might fit. The first problem is you can see it's too wide. So there's going to have to be a bit of uh, machining done. Um, I have to have a think about this. After some moments of pondering it's occurred to me that I'm going to modify this plastic piece to fit. i have looking on there that the back of the cartridge, this part here, oh no, all the way around, the back of the cartridge that lined up with the holes sits too far back. So I'm going to make the mounting holes nearer to there. Also this is quite thick so I'm going to go on the bandsaw and chop these off to make it flush. Now we're back from a bit of machining. I've made this uh, slimmer and thinner and put some new holes in and we'll see how that mounts. But it fits in for a start off, that's encouraging. So I can get those fiddly little screws in. To turn this into a mono cartridge I've made this little jumper connector. So you just connect from a diagonal you know, two diagonal pins on these cartridges. And that should do it. That turns into a mono cartridge. Let's clip the stylus back in. Oh, 
Okay, fiddly job. So the new cartridge is in, let's see if it works. So I've rigged this up to the oscilloscope, so I'm going to put that album back on and get it going and we'll see on the oscilloscope what the output is. I, mean, I could play it, but we'll play it in a moment. Let's get this going. Brilliant. Right first time. <laughs> it's lucky. Well, I'm quite happy with that. That's quite a result. This really is really and truly ready to go back in the restored case. Not so fast though, these things do have a reputation. They are known as uh, groove grinders because they have quite a high tracking weight. This thing's behaving well, it's not skating across the record which is, which is good. But uh, I'm intrigued how heavy it is, we might need to adjust it. i just stop that there. The tracking weight's adjusted by pulling a spring and just relocating it if we need to. So I'm just going to get some little handy scales designed for the job. So we're in a good position. I'm just going to turn these on. See how heavy it is. Oh, what a surprise. It's over scale. It's very heavy. Well that's got it a bit nearer to where um, a modern record player plays. Let's see how it works. <laughs> it might not track very well. So now we've got the record player working nicely and just to tidy up the amplifier now we already know it works we heard it sort of humming and buzz but we can always come back to it if we need to um, I'm just going to reconnect the wires basically and this is some nice old technology um, components are built to last then um, an interesting part and this has got an old selenium rectifier um, very old it's still working so I'm going to leave it in an interesting little quirk in this is that the, uh, there's an indicator light, a little lens there, and there's a bulb behind it, but it doesn't light up, <laughs> it doesn't line up. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to move the bulb so it actually shines underneath the indicator lens. Not too deep, going to go all the way through. There we go. So I'm just going to warm this one up. This is the red wire. That comes off there okay. I'm just going to place it back on. White wire is a bit more awkward. It's sort of hidden around the back. Let's grab hold of it there. That's off. Bend the wire to, to suit it a bit better. <laughs> oh, bit of a fiddle. Bit of a lot of a fiddle now. And it's on. So that's the low voltage supply that comes from the motor slash transformer arrangement. Very clever that. That just leaves the mains power which goes to the motor, which is the brown and black wire. Uh, I've also got to put a new mains lead on this, 
which I'll do afterwards. So I'm going to twist these together in the same way. Uh, another thing I'm just considering on these old record players is that they there's no fuse on this. This is relies on the plug top fuse. Now I know that we'll put a 3 amp fuse in this, but this record player needs nowhere near that. So I'm considering it says, on, in fact, it says on here that it's uh, the switch rating is at one amp. So I'm going to see if I can find a fuse, one amp fuse, to put in in line with this, make it a bit safer. How I'm going to sort the fuse out is I'm going to make an arrangement like I've seen um, on other old record players. We'll actually mount a fuse on the back of the mounting board. So I brought the mounting board over here. I do realise I need to pass the amplifier like, chassis through here. And then sort of get this lined up on there. And just screw that through there. Right, this is all wired up now, got the fuse in, got the mains cable connected, it's all ready to go. I'm going to pop it back in the case now. Remember to put the speaker back in this thing, won't make much noise without it. This record player is now back together. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's working beautifully. It takes singles, it takes LPs, just as it was intended to. The auto change is spot on as well. Very happy with this job. doing this one I enjoyed it it's turned out really well shame to let it go catch you next time